Hello everyone and welcome to our SOLIDWORKS inspection demonstration. My name is Fleming Tiedemann and I'm, I'm an application engineer here at Intercat. We will jump straight into it. Um, so SOLIDWORKS inspection um, is capable of automate the ballooning of engineering drawings uh, and minimize the time needed to record inspection measurements and streamlines the creation of industry standard inspection reports. The value is obviously that we can um, save a lot of time by uh, automate the process. We can eliminate errors and inconsistencies as it takes uh, information straight off your documentation and thereby uh, give you a quick return of investment. So what it actually does, um, SOLIDWORKS inspection can create documents for quality control and planning um, and create FIA uh, or first article inspection reports. It will automate um, the process of ballooning drawings. Uh, it will adhere to major standards, uh, it could be PAAP, AS9192, ISO 13485, FDA or custom in-house standards. Um, it will perform inspection whether it's in process incoming or final and it will record control measurements. For the capabilities and benefits, um, it will reduce delivery time up to 90% faster um, compared to conventional methods. Uh, it's an automated process and it's very easy to use. Uh, you'll use minimal time uh, for training in the software. It's literally uh, a matter of hours. It will meet all your inspection needs whether you use SOLIDWORKS or other CAD systems. Uh, it's available in either standalone application and or a fully integrated add-in for SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and it will support SOLIDWORKS native drawing format or documents in PDF or TIFF format. Uh, it can eliminate errors and inconsistencies. It will create inspection documentation just in a few clicks as mentioned before. It will comply with industry standards so it takes advantage of uh, templates um, both built-in and also um, documents you might have or templates you might have set up um, to uh, adhere to your standards. We can then publish and export to external quality control system within the software um, or you can export to XML to uh, other uh, systems. We can capture measure, uh, measured values directly and the professional version actually uh, allows you to use dig digital measuring equipment, uh, could be a digital caliber for example. It also allows you to import results from any CMM uh, and also it will highlight dimensions uh, in your uh, documentation based on results. SOLIDWORKS inspection and just a quick overview in regards to the products. Um, so you can see here I've sort of split it up a little bit. Uh, it comes in two versions in essence. So one is the uh, SOLIDWORKS inspection standard. Comes with a standalone and add-in uh, so it can uh, pr uh, process SOLIDWORKS drawings, PDFs and TIFFs. It's got an advanced uh, optical character recognition system. So if you work with PDFs or TIFFs, um, you basically go in and um, capture uh, the values directly uh, on the PDF. It will balloon automatically, so it can do automatic ballooning, uh, whether it's in a SOLIDWORKS drawing or a PDF or TIFF for that matter. It does reporting and obviously you can export everything out uh, to PDF or Excel or even XML. So when we go a tier higher, so SOLIDWORKS Inspection Professional, that can handle automated measurement input and that also supports CM CMM data import. It will do an automatic verification for you with color coded results as well. So before we get started, I will just give you a little overview in regards to the demo. So um, I'm going to go through you um, with you um, inspection drawings via the SOLIDWORKS add-in first and show you how it can create uh, inspection reports. Um, we will also enter some measured values uh, just so you can see what the, what the result will be. 
inspection drawings in standalone and that will be the next one so we will switch to the standalone application so you can have a look at that as well um, where I'm gonna um, capture some uh, information from a PDF using the optical uh, character recognition system and then we will again uh, do some report creation and enter some um, measured values so you can see how that works so let's get started. I'm just going to switch to SolarWorks first. So as you can see, um, when uh, inspection is added in, we obviously get a new uh, toolbar here uh, where it allows us to uh, create uh, some new inspection projects. Um, there is um, some setup uh, where we can uh, edit inspection methods. Uh, so, and you can obviously add your own, you can even import uh, inspection methods from here. We can um, edit operations, so we can add more operations to it, um, so whether it's analyzing, bending, cutting, deburring, and so on and so forth. And there's a template editor built-in as well, uh, so you can uh, customize uh, SolarWorks inspection um, export templates. Uh, so it's got a built-in template editor. Uh, so you can basically customize uh, the documentation exactly to suit your needs. So we'll just get started. So this is a typical drawing you might want to um, create an in, in inspection report from. So conventionally we would print it out, we will mark it up with pen or, or, or the like. Um, in SolarWorks inspection it's basically automated everything. So when you go create um, an inspection report, you can obviously set up a template here as well to adhere to a particular standard. And when you hit OK, it will actually um, open up this um, project set up here, so it's the general settings. In SolarWorks add-in, it's uh, capable of uh, tapping into your custom property. Um, so if you've got pro custom properties to your components, you can either take it from the drawing. We can uh, take custom properties from uh, the model itself, or even configuration specific if needed. So here we're going to put in some data. So we're going to grab that, let's see, so let's take it from the model here, so part number would be that one there, part name, we'll just use a description, maybe the part revision, let me just go quickly and then pick up on all that. Further down we can obviously set uh, characteristics info. Um, so we can do the start number, whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. And there's a classification here, whether it's incidental, minor, uh, major, or critical. Um, further down, it's about sampling, so whether it's a lot size, a level, also the type. And uh, you can obviously set up the uh, acceptance quality limit here as well, if you like. We'll just go further with this. Um, so it's basically uh, set up as a little wizard here, as you can see, so I can go next. And here we can basically decide what we want to include in our report. So whether it's um, dimension that's marked for inspection, if it's reference, uh, basic dimensions, um, secondary units, overridden values, and so on and so forth. So it's relatively easy to, to set up. It can go out and recognize um, notes as well. So whether we uh, have notes in the sheet format or uh, on the drawing sheet itself, uh, GDTs, whole callouts, um, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty nifty. We'll go next to that. Here we can set the tolerance settings. So obviously you can go in and preset all the tolerance settings, whether it's linear or angular. And all we have to do now is click OK, and the system will um, create all the balloons for you. And that's basically it. We're ready to rock and roll.
So all the dimensions are now captured, um, including their, um, their tolerances. So we'll just um, open one up here just for the fun and giggles and have a look. So it's pretty practical here as well. New to 2016, they've um, put in a zoom to selection. Um, also here you can individually um, classify them and also set the method um, how it should be, for example, measured. Could be digital calipers um, and AQL can be set here as well. Zoom to selection is pretty nifty because obviously it zooms into that area where we've got the the markup and each individual dimension have obviously got the the uh, properties here so the characteristics as such where there might be tolerances upper limit lower limit uh, it will pick up on the different tolerance types as well uh, for example this uh, diameter 25 and all we have to do now is basically um, export to Excel. Uh, so this is basically what you can do in the standard package. So I could export it directly to an uh, to a, a Excel file now. Um, so let's just take a simple one here, the AS9102, and go OK to that. And that opens it up in Excel. So here you can see that as we go through it, um, it will actually list the tolerances and also put in all the uh, characteristics here. And you can straight off the bat here start to fill in results. So for example, uh, this is uh, 13.23. Um, so that's green, so that's okay. Uh, so if you go, Let's just put 0.6 here. Obviously, if it's um, out of the ordinary, if it's out of spec, obviously, we'll mark it up at red. And here we can do maybe uh, 53.1 and so on and so forth. I think you get the point. Um, so here, obviously, we get the option uh, to type in manually. So. It creates an inspection report, it creates the associated uh, drawing uh, for it as well in uh, SolidWorks. Now, <clears throat> with the markup as well, you might find that um, the drawing gets a little bit modeled with this. Um, it is actually uh, set up in a layer uh, in SolidWorks. So in the layer properties, you can see it's actually a ballooned layer now, balloons. and Obviously, we can turn that off, uh, so the drawing is nice and clean for production use, uh, for example. We can export this into the standalone um, application. So we obviously need to um, save it first, uh, so we will export that. And I'm just going to whack it into uh, our uh, folder here. And when that's done, we will switch to the standalone uh, package and have a look. So here we're going to open up our um, project. So the standalone offers you a, a lot of different sort of types, type of um, uh, capabilities here and uh, just before we go further here we can go in and have a look at the options uh, so everything is basically customizable whether it's the shape of the balloons the colors uh, how big how small and so on and so forth so everything can be set up uh, to comply to your standards for example in options uh, we've got obviously the project options where we can go um, and actually set up uh, our tolerances um, we can set up default units and so on and so forth here. We can control our um, OCR, uh, so you can basically set it up. Uh, you can, in essence, set up your own custom directory. So if you've got an old handwritten drawing, for example, you can get, go in and uh, recognize the characters and, and add it to the system. 
So, uh, and in that way, make it easier for the system to recognize the characters uh, that might be in a 40-year-old drawing, for example. Um, ballooning, again, can be set up as you, as you would uh, like it, where it's placing it, the colors, the border colors, and so on and so forth. There's some exporting options here as well, so you can um, put default suffix for, for the PDFs uh, that might be um, exported, also for the Excel files. And we can add in um, export templates here as well. So we've got a, a lot of different buildings that's already ready to go here as well. Uh, the application options. Um, obviously, it can be set up. It's got uh, some autosave uh, capabilities. Um, we've got uh, performance settings. There's some different lists, so you can uh, customize your lists in here. Um, display, and obviously the measurement input. Now, this is uh, an, an interesting one as well. Obviously, the color coding can be set up um, as, you, as you like. You can set a pass zone. We can do either worst case, best case, average case. And non-variable measurements value, so it's either you know pass, a marginal, or fail. Uh, that can be set up as well if you would like to use a different terminology. So the way that works is obviously every single node here uh, has got um, links back to the table down here. Uh, so we've got a bill of characteristics. So it's basically what we captured in the drawing just before. And it's all listed in here. Obviously, when we go further out, we might have uh, the tolerances uh, recorded for the different items here as well. Um, it will sort of cycle around and show you where the different values are as well. Now, going back, um, so we might find a character here, uh, or characteristics. And for that, we could go in and actually type in, for example, um, pass. So, and that's just obviously a manual method. So you can see that it will actually, in the drawing here, um, highlight the area as well. And obviously that works with my marginal, as it was set up, or file for that matter. And it will obviously color code um, these uh, areas accordingly. Now all that can be obviously be saved back to uh, to the document or to the product uh, project. So when we save that, it's obviously keeping that in check. So by printing this out, obviously you can at a glance see what tolerances are actually uh, in spec and what's out of the ordinary. So it's it's actually that simple. Uh, so from the standalone, you would be able to do all all sorts of stuff here. Um, there is um, further down, if you go professional, uh, an option to uh, import uh, CMM data input. But I would like to show you that when we get to the uh, the other projects, uh, I'll crank up. So basically, the standalone, um, where we are not going to use a native uh, SolidWorks file. We're actually going to use a PDF. So I'm just going to close this uh, project, and we're going to create a new project. Again, I'm just going to find my standard here, and in this case, I'm going to pick my uh, standalone documentation here. So I've got a lower plate here. This is actually just a PDF. And the PDF, obviously, we haven't got any custom properties as such. Uh, if you had searchable uh, text in the PDF, it would be possible to actually tap into that. Um, but in this case, it's just a PDF, so it could even be a scanned document for that matter. And this is where we are going to use the OCR, so the Optical uh, Character Recognition uh, System. This is actually quite amazing. I'm quite surprised about how uh, eff effective this actually is. Uh, so for example, uh, I want to capture part name here. I'm just dragging a box around it and it will add the text in here. Part number, we'll just add that in. Might take the part revision here as well. I'm just going to drag a box around that. 
and you can see it's got no problem actually capturing this data. So this is what I want to uh, capture for for now for this uh, for the project itself. Obviously, um, we can add other values in here: some material, serial number, the report number, and so on and so forth. Just go okay to that. Okay, so initially here we're just going to capture some uh, information. Uh, again, we're going to use the OCR system to do that. Um, so uh, basically, the system needs to know what type you want to uh, import here. So uh, whether it's dimensions, geometric tolerance, or even notes. Um, I think I might actually start out with a note. So up the top here, we've got a note. And I'm just going to pin this out so you can see what's actually happening here. Again, it's basically point and shoot. Um, so we can go in and say, OK, I'm going to capture a note here. I'm going to take these one by one. Oh, that one. And the next one. And you can see, while I'm capturing it, it will actually balloon um, the notes as well, and number three, and it comes across pretty good here, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so it pops in the notes here, so we're going to go and capture some dimensions as well, um, so we're going to capture this. Again, it picks up uh, on the dimension, even what type of dimension, uh, the value and obviously uh, the tolerances as well uh, and calculate the upper and lower limit. We'll just go a little bit further here, so that one maybe, and that one, and maybe that one. Comes across pretty well. Here we've got a little bit of a special case. It's, it says two times R125. Uh, so I'm just going to capture that. Um, so here we'll actually go in and recognize that is quantity two. Now these might have to be measured individually. Obviously it's in two spots uh, on the plate here. Um, but there is an option here to actually create for each instance as well. So you can um, dissect it out and make it a little bit more uh, detailed. We'll just continue and capture some more dimensions here, like that, and this, and this, and you can see even if I'm a little bit out, it will still capture it. As we've captured them, you can see down here in the bill of characteristics, it will have captured my notes, and all my values and my tolerances as well. We can add other documents to it. So if you, for example, have a bill of material you have, to, or you, you would like to add into uh, the documentation, we can add uh, drawings. In this case, I'm just going to take a parts list. And for that, um, as I've got the parts list here, um, I can go in and quickly extract that. So uh, again, takes advantage of the uh, recognition system. And I might just grab all these. And you can see it goes really quick as well. So here we can assign these um, to, for example, part name, maybe a part number, maybe a serial number. And when we go OK to that, it will add that to our uh, bill of material down here as well. So that works really well. Um, so we obviously got tabulated up here where we have our drawings uh, and in this case my part list as well. This obviously all get uh, added into um, the project as such. Now you might ask, uh, what happens if I've got a revision of the drawing? Um, you can compare drawings, and so if you have um, done your project here and you've done your documentation, and there might be a revision on the drawing, you can um, compare the drawings. Um, so here I can uh, compare this with an, a later revision. And when we do that, we sort of get a color coding uh, in um, 
in the preview here. So you can see here that everything red is okay in essence. Um, whatever there is green, there might be a change. Uh, so you can see there's a few um, items here. There's been some uh, angle measurements uh, added to the to the drawing. So obviously uh, these can then be um, added in so you can replace the drawing and just quickly capture a couple of more um, uh, characteristics uh, if needed. Very good. Okay, so um, the optical recognition system as you can see is quite capable. Um, by the way, there is actually another use for it as well. I had a bit of a bit of a play yesterday. Uh, I took a, a picture uh, just out of an old manual uh, with my mobile phone and just to to show you um, I'm gonna add a drawing here and I saved it obviously as a JPEG and then I used paint to convert it into a um, TIFF file uh, and it was basically just a test really but it's actually quite amazing what it does so in order for this to to work it converts it to a PDF and now we've got this um, obviously this information here and for that obviously it's probably a note so you can see if you've got documentation for example you need to capture say uh, it could be out of a manual you need to amend or something like that you simply go in and capture your text And it comes across fairly well, so it struggles a little bit with this. Um, I could probably recapture it now and actually get it right. Uh, it worked yesterday after a couple of goals, but you always got the option here to go in and, and amend the text. Uh, for example, and all this uh, can obviously be copied and maybe even pasted into a document. Um, and that makes it obviously very, very handy, uh, even for uh, other types of documentation as such. Okay, we will uh, obviously remove that drawing again. We don't need that in our project. I'm just going to save my project here now, like so. Okay, so um, we talked about uh, data input. Obviously, we can we can add on the fly here. Just uh, type in our results uh, in the professional package. But there's also an option here to import uh, CMM uh, data report. So you might have some uh, electronic in electronic measurement um, systems, and there's a lot of different machines it um, supports. Uh, so you can see here there is right from one end to the other. Um, so all uh, uh, the common sort of players are listed in here. Um, there is an option to actually customize this as well. So if uh, inspection doesn't talk to your machine, it can be set up so it, it works. It's basically a little bit like a post-processing sort of thing. So here I can go in and add some files. So this is data that I was captured earlier. So I've got these uh, text files. So you can see that uh, the machine has uh, picked up on uh, some things here. And I'll just add these three um, text files in. And it will list them all in here. Um, so what we can do here now is obviously auto assign them. So it will find what's, uh, what, what fits. So in this case, obviously, uh, I can go by type, normal, plus tolerance, minus tolerance. So we'll go in and mix and match, basically. Um, I think it's very, very uh, unusual if it doesn't find it. You might have two dimensions uh, that's the same, and that's obviously where uh, we have to go in and maybe tinker with it a little bit manually. But apart from that, um, it will be in rare cases. When we go OK to that, it should add them in. Let's just quickly have a look at that again. Uh, okay, so I might just quickly reload the project. Uh, so, like so. And let's just try to do that again. 
and here we go so now it um, popped them in obviously a glitch there and you can see that the data got uh, added in here uh, straight from your CMM and um, all that can obviously now be uh, exported out so whether you use uh, an Excel file uh, you can export PDF and Excel so it takes obviously the drawing um, as well but you can see here that um, as we sort of publish uh, it will actually give you color coding on the drawing itself in regards to pass marks and whatnot. Um, Excel obviously offers you different types of uh, reports here as well and again here we could probably do a let's just try what about a process performance uh, and export it and Excel opens it here and you can see here this is my process sheet uh, so it will actually pop everything in in regards to uh, our uh, findings uh, ready for us to publish um, there is obviously other report types here whoops uh, wrong application uh, so here we go um, there's obviously other uh, options here as well uh, in regards to uh, the reporting as such where in this case uh, it's actually multiple forms and uh, so we can have obviously our um, oh, that's actually the wrong form excuse me so here's the right form so where it actually pops in obviously our uh, bill material um, and further on here um, first article report ready to rock and roll basically just have to fill it in sign it off and finally obviously uh, the, the list here which you might want to, to type in some more findings if you like so that's basically um, it in regards to SolarWorks inspection um, so there's a, a lot of sort of really neat little tools um, with the measurement input, obviously you might have a batch of 200, so you can al always add a new column and add new results here as well. Uh, this was obviously done over three results, as you can see it was three uh, text documents I imported from the CMM, uh, but you can put in manually here as well. Uh, quick run through. Um, for the export to external quality control systems, uh, it supports obviously NetInspect, so you can go straight on to that, uh, or a quality expert. I haven't got accounts here, so I can't show you, but um, that basically hooks up to uh, external quality control systems uh, just by a single click, really. All right, we will just uh, do a bit of a recap here. Um, so. Basically, what we had a look at is um, we defined the project, we captured uh, characteristics uh, both uh, with OCR and in SolarWorks itself. We assigned inspection methods and standards, uh, we, we entered measurements uh, and evaluated deviations, and obviously we did some automating uh, of the ballooning via the OCR as well. Um, so that's generally a quick run through. Um, so SolarWorks inspection can obviously help you reduce delivery time for these reports. It can eliminate errors and inconsistencies. As you can see, the OCR system is, is fairly bulletproof. Um, uh, we can create inspection documentation just in a few clicks, really. Uh, we can comply with industry standards. We can publish and export to external quality control systems. We can capture measured uh, values directly in um, the applications or we could use digital measurement uh, equipment such as a digital caliber uh, just like the one you can see on uh, on uh, uh, slide here in fact um, we can import results from any CMM uh, machinery and we can obviously highlight uh, dimensions in the drawings based on the results so it's nice and clear uh, in regards to your results this uh, concludes the demonstration. Uh, if you would like a more in-depth uh, demonstration or if you've got further questions, uh, you can contact John uh, Belsham. He is our specialized product team leader uh, in Australia and New Zealand.
There's some phone numbers here. I will leave that up here just for a minute if you want to jot it down. You could alternatively, uh, alternatively email him on uh, this email address here. You could also call us uh, at INSCAT. Um, so obviously in Australia it's 300 CAT CAM or 1300-223-226. Or New Zealand it's 0508 CAT CAM. Uh, so again 0508 226 uh, and there's an alternative number here for New Zealand as well, um, so it's 09525-9870. I can only say uh, thank you very much for your participation here. Um, I hope you um, got a little bit of an insight what uh, inspection is all about. Again, please do not hesitate to contact us should you have any further questions. Thank you very much.